Drop it. Welcome to the new mini show Fusions. Today we are joined by Mike Horvath, Executive Vice President at RevNova. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Mary. Really appreciate the time. So before we get too far into this, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up at RevNova? Well, I am one of the co-founders of RevNova. So I've uh, been here since the very beginning. And our whole concept of RevNova was to really solve a problem that we saw in the industry. One of the co-founders uh, was a leader at Schneider Logistics. And one of the big challenges their team faced was you know, connecting things together, systems together to get their job done in the end. And so when we looked at the industry in general, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for connected apps to work together in an ecosystem of a business workflow. And so we built a TMS directly on the salesforce.com CRM platform so we could have a cloud-based TMS that is seamlessly integrated with Salesforce's award-winning suite of products for customer engagement and, and digital engagement as well as partner engagement. We apply all that great technology and tools, you know, to our TMS application. So it's been a fun ride so far, and we're really excited about our partnership with Freightways. I mean, I'm really excited about it, but also, I mean, I feel like you guys really just kind of said, eh, we don't really like what's out there. We're going to make something better. And just, I, I, I don't know, I really like your guys' TMS. I think it's going to be pretty cool, but we'll dive into that in a little bit. Um, for those who might not know, you kind of mentioned it a little bit. Uh, Revenovo recently had Sonar Trap Rates integrated into their TMS platform. In your opinion, what are some of the benefits that of uh, software integration for businesses and how can it kind of help streamline operations when companies partner together in software? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, what we see our customers trying to get to is just how much should I pay a carrier to move some freight and how much should I charge a customer? And, you know, in a spot market with dynamic pricing uh, fluctuations changing really daily, depending on, you know, a lot of different factors, you know, having the data in where you're doing the work, you know, helps you make your job go more efficiently and, and be, be more productive. And so to illustrate that, I can actually show you what customers see in terms of workflow. So you're looking at the, our TMS and let's, I'm going to go to a recent load just to give you a uh, fast track over to one of the loads and how they use the track data inside the TMS. So this is an uncovered load. I have to figure out, you know, what should I offer this to a carrier for? So we have a product that component in our UI called Rate IQ. And what Rate IQ does is pulls in information about what should I be paying this particular, uh, what should I offer a carrier for this particular load? You notice we have two integrations with Freightways. We're bringing in the sonar signal so we can look at lane conditions in the market. So it helps me understand, am um, I going to, is this a tight market? Is it a loose market? Do I have an advantage in negotiations? Or, you know, how do I need to tweak my pricing? That can be used to derive, you know, an offer rate ultimately at a max pay amount for your carrier sales reps. What Rate IQ does is seamlessly rolls in the Freightways track data alongside of your TMS data. It allows you to apply some logic to ultimately roll out a what we would call a spot rate, rate IQ rate, based on however you want to manipulate the algorithm between the freight waves data and the TMS data. Some people may choose to just use solely the freight wave sonar data. And the good news is it comes in really handy in, a, in many aspects where I don't have any data in my TMS on this given lane. You know, the freight waves data then would be the only source of data that I would use to at least get an offer rate in the market based on, you know, a very significant set of data. If you look at this particular load, um, you know, 971 loads, um, you know, that are contributing to this rate. So really solid data set, whereas inside the TMS, in this case, I only have one load. You'll notice that the rate IQ algorithm it basically generated a rate that was somewhere in between the two rates and uh, ultimately allowed me to drive my offer rates uh, a setting and max payment settings. So customers have the choice. They can rely solely on track rates. They can combine them with their internal rates and to uh, drive up um, uh, their offer rates and max payments when they're engaging carriers and using lane conditions in the mix for that decision making. That needs to be absolutely game changing because not only is it all in one spot, it's also like you don't have to flip between screens. You don't have to hunt through old emails saying like, okay, I paid you $1,500 on this. 
to yesterday, 1700 last week, et cetera, et cetera. It's just all kind of in one spot, which to me has to be such a time saving game changer. But also I like that it shows the amount of loads that is pulling this data from because, you know, if you only had one load in your TMS, yeah, you could have gotten lucky. But um, if you know that th this rate has come from 971 loads, you know, it's probably going to be pretty accurate and you're probably not going to have a hard time getting it secured with a carrier with that rate. So it's got to it's got to kind of be a nice two handed or like a, a nice give and take there. Yeah, totally agreed. Customers really like the fact that they, you know, they have a lot of institutional knowledge and in lanes that they run and, you know, they can weight that a certain way, but on lanes that they don't run, you know, the track data can really provide that baseline for them where they don't have information or for lanes that they run, look at what the rest of the market looks like and compare and see how they're doing relative to the market. You know, maybe they're offering too much, maybe their salespeople are a little bit too aggressive <laughs> selling carrier freight. So it really gives them a data point that they can use, you know, within the workflow of the system real-time polls, yeah, you know, it's constantly being updated for every load that you're looking at in order to make these types of decisions. And we also apply this uh, a component to our RFP process as well. So if you want to look at spot rates as it, as it relates to you know, RFPs, you can use the same component in our RFP module as well. Have you guys seen a lot more success in like winning and um, you know bidding through the RFP process? Have you guys seen a lot more success kind of th as a result of this? You know, our customers, I think, will tell us that, you know, the pricing support uh, types of data is very key to growing their business. It, it's predominantly used for, you know, lanes that they don't know a lot about or that they have low volume on and then and to compare against, you know, the lanes that they have heavy volume on to see how they're comparing to the market. So, you know, market intelligence and then getting it right here in real time and being able to action it very quickly is really what drives uh, the performance of our customers, you know, saves them a ton of time. They don't have to bounce between screens, have multiple logins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, higher productivity, more intelligent decision making, uh, you know, results in better business results at the end of the day. I feel like that's got to be extremely helpful, especially when you bring on a new customer, because if you have a customer you've been servicing for five, 10 years, you pretty much know most of their lanes, you know what they're okay with, you know, kind of how they run their business and if there's any like you know shippers that continually cause problems that means that you have to toss an extra hundred dollars onto the load um, but for new customers you know a lot of those account managers those sales reps they don't know what some of those lanes are so if you're familiar going from atlanta to nashville all day every day and then suddenly you have a customer that's up in minnesota to parts of wisconsin you, that's a completely different region, which has a whole other host of issues. So I think it's really cool that it has that data there. That way, like even if you are working on a new customer or lanes that you're not familiar with, you still kind of walk in with that baseline level of knowledge instead of just kind of throwing a dart at the board and hoping it lands a bullseye. Yeah, it, it, it's exactly why people use it and how they use it is to really achieve that where the system can guide you to you know, where you want to be competitively in the market, where you want to be from a margin perspective as well. We can do a number of things on the markup side of this equation, which uh, you know take this integration of this data and apply it to the customer side as well, because we're customer facing sales as well as carrier facing sales. So it really does streamline the process. And at the end of the day, also it gives you great metrics. You know, how are we doing? How are we doing against the market? How are we doing against our own history? And uh, it really gives managers the ability to um, make better business decisions, pricing strategies, markup strategies, et cetera. That data visibility component has to be absolutely game changing with this. And I'm a big proponent of, you know, get that data, do something with it, create actionable plans from it. Um, and I'm a sucker for anything that makes that and that makes that better and improves it. Yeah. And that's going back to what we started off with here. Um, if you look at the dashboards and you know, completely configurable dashboards, completely drilled through, and you can take all the data that's in the system that's stored persistently and drive dashboards and reports off of it and different kinds of metrics, including geographical kinds of overlays with our TMS analytics package. So really lots of uh, ways to you know, derive insights from the data, but also as we just saw, real-time actionable workflow support through integration. Yeah, that that's, has to be, that to me, that's a really big value add, but I know not everyone might think that. 
Um, but when it guess I guess when it comes to looking for a partner to integrate into your software and into your TMS, what are some of those green flags and also some of those red flags that you get when you start the preliminary conversations with partners that, you know, might say, okay, yeah, this is worth continuing pursuing a potential partnership or and for that we're just gonna back away now. Yeah, great question. So all partnerships, you know, start off typically in our world with either a strategic vision to go accomplish something with an integration partner or um, grounds up from customer requests. And so um, what we saw was a number of our strategic customers requesting this integration with Freight Waves Track Data to support their pricing initiative. And so you know, we evaluate, so that's an easy decision to go out and reach out to the partners. The second aspect is, is it technically feasible and is, it, you know, is the technology capable of doing the types of integrations that our customers want? So we evaluated on the technical level and then the business level, I can tell you, uh, some good stories about um, and partnerships that never launched because it was technically possible. Every you know, both sides, the customers wanted it, but when they looked at the pricing, they said, "I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't justify it." And so, usually, those business decisions have to be made, and then the technical decisions are made, and those are either the green flags or the red flags, and ultimately, yep, either. Uh, make the partnership go or stop the partnership from happening. Oh, 100%. I feel like that has to be um, when the customers come to you and say, hey, we would like this solution for our TMS. You're just kind of like, well, this is easy. Like you just kind of did all the research for us. Like, let's go find out if it's possible. Um, but I uh, eventually would love to hear some of those stories about partnerships that never got off the ground. But that would be a different show entirely. Um, so what is your one piece of advice? Like that one thing that if someone that maybe has a TMS or is looking to upgrade their system or looking to integrate with a software partner, was that one piece of advice that you would give them um, when they're looking to enhance their current offering? Yeah, you know, we always start with, begin with the end in mind and, and, and you know, what's the business value of doing any kind of integration? You know, there's so many technically possible things, but how does it fit into the big overall strategic picture of what you're trying to accomplish. I think a lot of integrations happen kind of spur of the moment. Uh, let's glue this in, let's glue that in, let's glue this in. And then when it's all glued in, it doesn't really work all that well together. And um, you know, we, we're very cognizant of looking at this holistically and saying, here's how it fits in. This is where it would fit in. This is why we would think about integrating in a certain way, collaboratively designing that stuff with customers. So we can meet the goals that they're trying to get to, but we can also have a context that a lot of our customers won't even have in terms of how it fits in with all the other things that are happening in not only the TMS, but in our case, because our app running on Salesforce is typically collaborating with a number of other business apps all running on the same cloud that behave like one single app. How can this data go beyond TMS and be used for other business decisions you know, that you're trying to make within the company? And so, um, you know, definitely bringing that perspective to the table. I feel like that's got to be kind of almost an invaluable perspective of, you know, making sure that you're not just adding applications and adding it in integrations just for integration's sake and almost bogging it down and, you know, taking away that original value add that you have. Um, but if anyone wants to reach out to you, maybe about any uh, partnership integrations or why you chose to do things, or if they really like the Revanova TMS, where can they find you? Well, www.revenova.com is our website. So you can reach out via email if you just send an inquiry at sales at revenova.com. That'll get to uh, the appropriate contacts here, whether it's a partnership inquiry or an end user inquiry. And uh, we'd be happy to uh, speak to both, either new end user customers or new potential partners. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Traffic.